A laptop stand is a great way to achieve two goals at your desk. Raise your screen up to the optimal height to reduce your eye strain and increase airflow around your computer to keep it cool. I wrote a bit more about how that works for popular science, linked in the description. My mother-in-law sent me this photo of a stand she saw at a flea market and asked if I could make something like it for my father-in-law. I saw an opportunity for glory and bonus points. At the very least, whatever I built wouldn't have exposed plywood edges. Ugh. My first step was to design something better than the flea market find, which wasn't so much a process of design, but more of staring at a pile of Sapele boards for 20 minutes until I saw how it could become something functional. Pretty would come later. I started by drawing the layout of the sideboards onto my widest board. I picked the angle by propping the back of my laptop up until it felt comfortable. It's somewhere between 10 and 20 degrees. I used an angle matching gauge and didn't bother to actually measure the exact number. I'm old enough that I'm afraid if I try to remember too many more numbers, I'll start forgetting the important ones, like my wife's cell or my credit card or, God forbid, what time my kids get out of school. Once I had a side panel design I was happy with, I cut them out on the table saw and bandsaw. I used a tapering jig on the table saw to cut the top angle, making sure to save the cutoff to position the cuts for the front and back angles of the boards. Again, without ever having to know an actual angle number. For support braces, I used pieces that I already had available, so I only cut them to length, about 12 inches. I'm all about the path of least thinking and work required. I also cut the leg boards down to length, which was about 13 inches. I wanted those to extend out from the sides a bit, which turned out to be a bad call, but more on that in a few minutes. With the boards cut to size, I needed to cut some rabbits and slots into the side boards to hold the supports. For some strange reason, despite having a table saw five feet away at my maker space, I decided to cut these by hand with a Japanese pull saw and some chisels. I spent over an hour on this, between marking, measuring, and cutting. Honestly, they weren't terrible and would have worked, but they weren't as tight as I wanted, so I went back to the table saw with a cross-cut sled and made them perfect in about 15 minutes. That'll teach me to try and be all fancy and hand tooly. While I was at the makerspace, I took advantage of the router table to round over all of the exposed edges. When you do this, make sure to mark out which ones should be rounded and which shouldn't. I technically did mark, but then I got excited at the table and talked myself into doing more. So I wound up with some ugly gaps in the rabbits that I had to fill in later. Make your plan and stick to it, no matter how much you want to keep routing stuff. I also used the drum sander to sand all the boards up to 120 grit. I only got checked out on this tool a few weeks ago and I already love having access to it. I probably won't ever buy one for myself, but it does save time and annoyance, not to mention the hand cramps. I dry fit the whole unit together a few times and could tell there was something wrong. The sideboards might not have exposed plywood edges, but they were too basic. Adding ventilation holes made sense. After all, the whole point of the stand is to maximize airflow around the computer. Because I was apparently boycotting simplicity on this project, I decided to make a series of holes that increased in size and spacing to somewhat match the top angle. With my wife's help, I drew out several ideas on paper templates until I found the one that I liked. I traced the hole locations onto the board, cut small pilot holes with an eighth inch bit, and then transferred those holes to the second board to keep everything consistent. Then I cut out the actual hole sizes with a series of Forstner bits increasing in size, making sure to only go halfway through and then flip the board over so the bit didn't blow out the back.
I have access to a spindle sander at my makerspace, but not at home. Which is okay, because I have a drill press, dowels, and sandpaper, so I can make my own spindle sander to clean up the insides of these ventilation holes. I sanded all the rest of the boards one last time with 150 grit before assembly. It's almost always easier to do most of your sanding before putting a box together. Then it was time for assembly, which, as it turns out, was the most confusing part of the project. I stared at those stupid boards for half an hour, trying to figure out a good way to clamp them all. Then I went upstairs and thought about it all through dinner. Then I went back down and looked again. The problem was that I wasn't confident I could hold everything square while it was clamped. Finally, I gave up on one glue up and did it in two stages. Supports first, and legs once the supports were dry. It worked really well. It's off about a sixteenth of an inch corner to corner, which I can absolutely live with. Once everything was done, I brought it upstairs, plopped it down on the coffee table, and tried to decide why I hated the way it looked. Turns out, the problem was the legs extending out. They looked goofy, and threw the visual balance of the whole piece off. So, I cut them off with a flush cut saw, which made it look infinitely better. And would have made the clamping a lot easier. Hindsight, right? I filled all the ugly gaps with wood glue and sawdust, including the ones that were formed because of my overzealous routing. Then I sanded and card scraped everything one more time to remove the glue residue and clean up any final areas that I missed. Vacuumed it off, wiped it down with a tack cloth, and it's ready for finish. Spray on shellac took the wind that day. Now that it's spring, I can spray outside, which is far better than my poorly ventilated basement where the smell seeps up into the living room. I sanded in between coats and then rubbed everything down with a piece of brown paper bag to leave a perfect final coat. And that's it. A laptop stand fit for a king. Or, in this case, a father-in-law. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoy this kind of build project and would like to see more, like and subscribe so you don't miss an upload.